G'day everyone, welcome back to the shop in part two of this rail vice build. Straight off the bat, we're gonna be machining down the three jaws to length, and these are 80 millimeters long. You'll notice here I'm touching off on top of the part, finding my Z0. I'm gonna set the DRO here at this location. If you don't have a DRO, set the dial wheel on the knee handle. Stepping over to the left hand side, you will notice on the right hand side I've got a jaw stop or a vice stop setup. So what we're doing here is going to take a lick on every edge of the part, roughly taking off about half a mil to one mil. Obviously check your size to make sure you have enough length for the cleanup pass on both sides. Now the reason we're giving it a lick on one side is just to pre present a datum edge. So that datum edge will go when I flip it against the stop and I can machine the jaw down to length. There's the vice stop in action. Now the stock size parts that I had on hand were 80, about 86 millimetres long. So six mil had to come off. You'll see here that I'll measure now and I've come up here with 84.9 millimetres and I'll set that as a live dimension in the digital readout. Now to rough this down to size, I won't take a full depth cut. You can see here my depth of cut is 6mm and I'm doing a 4mm step over. Now this is a 12mm Evolute end mill designed for steel, coated. Carbide of course from, uh, this one was supplied by Live Tools, they're, they're the agent here in Australia. Now once I get to depth here, you can see my multiple passes, I'm starting to eat away at that side, bringing it down to length. Keep in mind, the other side has already been dressed. All right, up we go into the vise again. Let's do the prismatic milling for the jaws. So these are these prismatic faces. There's many ways you could have done this. I could have tilted the head. Um, I could have put an angle plate on, etc., etc. I went for a good old fashioned V block, but also 45 degree uh, V parallels would do also. Touched off on the top of the cutter. And you'll see here that I've used my CAD system to work out what is my depth of cut. Coming in gently in X, I'm going to kiss the part. Once I kiss the part, I'm going to hit X0 and start my cut. So here's the first pass in X. Second pass. And you can see I'm actually conventional cutting here at the moment, not climb milling. If I do climb milling, I only ever take um, no more than about half a mil. This, this little milling machine of mine is a little bit light. It's not like a bridge port. It's not as rigid or a King Rich machine. Here's my final pass to depth, and I'm doing a climb pass here, just taking a lick, cleaning it up. Cutter has stopped, and out of the vice it goes, and here we have a look at it. And you'll notice that I also mark out my jaws. Uh, now my dicom layout fluid must be off because the colour went from blue to green. Okay, flipping it up on the long edge now. You can see my dimensions there and instructions. Touch off on top of the part. Stepping down now, winding that knee up to get my Z height. Once again, just coming in gently till I kiss the part and then set that X0. You'll notice I'm at 31.7 there. Coming across 1.5. Conventional milling, I'll do a climb pass of about half a mil on the way back. Ensure you lock your gibbs there on the X axis so the table does not move. As you know, your end mill will uh, pull your job in if your gibbs are a little bit loose. Here we are, final depth passed, two depth and width. 
and this is a, even though I'm climbing here I'm only taking a lick I'm not taking off you know chunks of uh, metal here just taking a lick of about 0.25 in the, in the wall and on the floor out of the vice we go look at that bloody beautiful okay now we need to do the webs on all three jaws now I clamped these together in the y-axis of course I made sure they were flush each one of them and this is just my roughing passes here just roughing out this web roughing out the left hand side first you'll notice I'm going to a 9.5 depth of cut and my step over is half a mil in the climb and I'll take more on a conventional mill. All my roughing's been done, I've just these are my final cuts. So this is the final pass to clean up the floor and wall. Okay, right hand side web now, and we'll rough that out as well, going down to negative 9.5 in Z. little bit of a brush here and then in we go again here's our final passes you see I'm just taking that half a mil to clean up the floor I'll drop in with my brush here to clean it just be careful of the spindle when you do that and uh, here I'm cleaning up my wall and you'll notice I'm at x67 because I've gone 25 for the first web 30 for the middle piece plus the width of the, or the diameter of the cutter and that gave me that figure here we are, they're all done and they're all the same. Right now, here's the little step in our fixed and sliding jaws. All right, once again, touch off on top. I'm going to come over to the front now. I'm going to kiss the part, just kissing it and touching off in Y0. to climb past here at half a mil and I'm at 2.5 here and then going full depth with that finish past the 3 mil so it's 3 mil wide 5 mil deep here it is here Alright, let's do the chamfer on all three jaws. Uh, please ensure you check your plans because the chamfer goes on certain edges. I've seen them put on the wrong side. I've used uh, trigonometry here to work out my depth of cut. Uh, you could do that as well. Or you could use a CAD system and cheat like I did and work it out in CAD. Uh, the plans are below, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to uh, download them. Uh, big thanks to Adam Carmichael last week who pointed out one of a, a small error in the plan which has now been fixed. All right, drilling and tapping the block end and fixed jaw. Now, it's important, you'll see where I'm setting this up again. Setting it up on the... So the Y is set up on the fixed jaw face. The X is set up on the part on the top, so it's the top left corner again. There we go. Now it's important that you drill and tap in the correct location. Do not drill and ream the other holes just yet. You'll do that upon assembly. These are just two holes that you need to drill and tap. Popping in here with the spot drill, you'll see the locations. I'll flash them up on the screen. Where to do, notice the location of the jaw, which way the, the prismetric prismatic jaws are facing okay drilling now check the plan so you understand the depth that you're drilling to you'll notice here that I've got the quill depth stop set so when my quill reaches the desired spot I can't drill any further and there it is there 
Now that I've got everything set up, it's just wash, rinse and repeat and do it on the other side, okay, the other jaw. Remember these are happening block end and sliding jaw. Let's drill and tap the block end here. Now, unfortunately my tap didn't come in. I've got it on order, um, M16 by two mil pitch. So I'll drill it and get it all ready to go for the tap and I'll have to tap that off camera. Sorry about that. Back onto the sliding jaw now where we need to drill three holes. Now these are not through holes, they're blind holes. Once again, setting up my, my datum point. Here you'll find that my X zero is in the center of the part. So I'll step up here and over, touch off on the other side, and I'll split my dial, go half X. And in we go here. You can see those locations come up on the screen. Uh, 4.2 drill. Check your depth in plan. I believe it's 12 or 15 mil. I think it's actually 12 millimeters. All right, drilling 9.85 to set up for the ream. Once again, I'm sorry, I didn't have the ream. I'm waiting for that to come. Um, so I've pre-drilled my hole and I'll ream that off camera at another point. Chamfering those three holes now. Bit of hang surface tap and drilling fluid which I get off from Live Tools. Thank you Artie up there if you're watching mate. Tapping that here now. Now all drills and taps here that I show are from Sutton Tools, Australian made. Back onto the sliding jaw now, and on the bottom there, we have to drill and tap it. Uh, you can see the location of the, the holes, they are diagonal, they're not in line. I'm, my DRO hasn't changed, I'm still in the center, and uh, it's already preset. So you can see here where I'm spot drilling, and then moving, of course, moving back to pick up that other hole, so it's diagonal. There's my location on the DRO in with the second spot. Here we come in here now with a coated drill bit to drill that hole. Once again, these are blind holes. Make sure you check your plan so you understand the depth. And in we go with the tap. This is a Sutton M6 by one mil pitch tap. And there we have it, there's all our jaws all completed, ready to rock and roll, and the rail wash. Look forward to seeing you next week on part three. See you guys. Bye for now.